What's up guys and welcome back. In this big Switch 2 update video, we have a lot of information to discuss and analyze together, including new information that may possibly give major evidence about the big question many people have been debating and trying to figure out about the Switch 2 SoC chip and nanometer size, which holds the CPU and GPU. And on top of that, we'll also discuss a big component of the graphics performance that many are not considering and is actually separate from the Switch 2's teraflops, RAM, and DLSS upscaling features. And then we'll also finally discuss how this could be possibly the month that Switch 2 is revealed and what may transpire when that happens very soon. So if you enjoy this type of content, please give the video a like and subscribe for more. Now, a big topic of discussion lately, of course, has been the question on what nanometer size, four nanometer versus eight nanometers, would be for the Switch 2 SoC, which is the system on chip, which holds the CPU and GPU, which basically needs to be done for these consoles to keep their size and their power consumption down. Since these devices like the Switch and even the PlayStation and Xbox, they still need to be smaller form factors to fit in your living room or in an entertainment center. They're not basically gigantic PCs. But especially for the Switch 2, the size of the chip is extremely important because this is a portable device and it has to have good battery life in order to actually fulfill that requirement to be a portable system along with being docked and be able to play games on your TV. The debate between 4 nanometers and 8 nanometers has been going on for the last three and a half years ever since mid-2021 when the T239 Tegra chip was leaked by a well-known NVIDIA chip leaker who basically said that the chip was based on 8 nanometer process and this is what Nintendo was going to be using for Switch 2 at the time. And keeping that in mind, remember that this was back in 2021. And now here we are at the end of 2024, the Switch 2 is about to be revealed. And many people have a lot of questions now about this because of the size of the chip in conjunction with the actual size of the console that was leaked. A lot of people have had discussions about that as well, that basically it just doesn't seem like this chip will be the right size for a portable device at this point if it is 8 nanometers. And the very interesting thing is though, the console would actually be performing pretty well while docked if it was 8 nanometers because the clock speeds wouldn't necessarily have to be limited so bad in docked mode even at 8 nanometers it wouldn't matter so much but again the size of the chip and the form factor all have to be taken into consideration and then the big elephant in the room would be the heat and also the power consumption while on portable mode you'd be looking at a console that would probably have like an hour of battery life due to using that 8 nanometer process especially with 12 sms which would equal to be about 1500 CUDA cores which which is what the estimated specs would be for the T239 chip. And I want to make it clear that the information I have here today cannot actually prove, of course, that Nintendo will be using one size versus another, but this information can give a very logical and clear explanation as to why Nintendo may, in fact, be going with 4 nanometers or the 4N process, which is basically equal to the customized version of 5 nanometers by NVIDIA with TSMC, also with Samsung 4 nanometer as well. I want to make it very clear, like I said, this cannot prove that, and Nintendo may still actually be using 8 nanometers when it's all said and done, but there's some very interesting information that kind of doesn't really line up with Nintendo using 8 nanometers. And since this is such a very clear distinction, I definitely have to show it to you guys before the console is revealed, which should probably be very, very soon. And just speaking for myself personally, I will be playing Switch 2 like 99% of the time while docked. So for me, whether the console's 8 nanometers or 4 nanometers, all that matters really is going to be the dock performance for me personally. Yes, I will want to have the portable experience to be great. I probably will try it out a few times, but really I'm going to be mainly focused on the docked play with Switch 2. So if it's 8 nanometers, the actual dock performance will still line up with what my expectations are, which would be probably over 3 teraflops to 4 teraflops or so, which is extremely good for the Switch 2 in my opinion for what it's doing, especially with DLSS. It was always going to come down to how this thing performs in portable mode. That was going to be the main concern for Nintendo fans who want to play this on the go, which of course is the entire aspect of what makes the Switch and Switch 2 so appealing is the hybrid nature of it. So of course, the portable play is gonna be a big, big factor. It may not be for me personally, 
but for a ton of people out there, of course, it's going to be a major factor. So the performance while this thing is in portable mode, if it is 8 nanometers, the big worry is that this thing will have to be cut down so drastically that there's going to be a lot of software development needed by Nvidia and Nintendo to get this thing running at barely passable levels, you could say, at 8 nanometers. So likewise, during these last three years, the argument has been that, hey, well, maybe Nintendo and Nvidia have a deal that they can have 8 nanometers or switch to at a very, very low cost. 4 nanometers just might be too expensive for them to make a deal. Thus, since Nintendo is looking to make the most profits possible, that they would then go with the 8 nanometer process. And then that, of course, would make the most sense, right? You would think so. However, there was something very interesting that I found that we need to talk about here that Nintendo may have considered recently as far as what size they would go for the actual T239 chip in the final actual shipping model of the Switch 2. And I found this through the independent research and analysis company known as Semi-Analysis, which specializes in semiconductor and AI industries. And they go about doing research on what these chips cost to manufacture. And they revealed something very interesting a few years ago about the cost of four nanometer chip wafers versus eight nanometer chip wafers. They brought out that their sources indicated that the wafer cost of TSMC N5-N4, which is basically the four nanometer process of TSMC, is more than 2.2 times more expensive than Samsung eight nanometers. But the huge caveat to this is that the wafer cost increase also comes with a 2.7 times higher transistor density than Samsung eight nanometer. Taking this into consideration, since four nanometers is much more performant than eight nanometers, you would think logically that Nintendo would actually be getting a better deal overall because they're buying these chips in great quantities by the millions, right? So it would actually be saving them money to go with four nanometers over eight nanometers because it is actually less expensive to use at this point. Now, of course, this wouldn't apply to Nintendo if they were making far less Switch 2 consoles. But since they're likely gonna be making 100 million plus of these Switch 2 consoles, it would actually make sense to backload these with a ton of chips being made in production. So going with a four nanometer process is actually giving you more chips per wafer. Yes, they're more expensive per wafer, but you're getting a lot more than you would with eight nanometers. You're actually getting a much better deal for Nintendo in the long run going with four nanometers. And on top of that, you're getting much better performance, which would then be quote unquote, a win-win for Switch 2. That would be the logical thing for Nintendo to do. However, we're dealing with Nintendo here, right? So a lot of times Nintendo simply doesn't do the logical thing and they sometimes just go ahead and buy chips that may seemingly make no sense in the moment. Like for me personally, back in 2016, I didn't think the Tegra X1 made any sense for Nintendo to use, but hey, they did it and everything worked out just fine for them. So the same thing may actually apply here. They may actually be using eight nanometers Samsung for Switch 2 and it may not make any sense to us and it may not make any cost sense either, and they may be wasting their money, but hey, we can't control Nintendo, and that may be their choice. But logically and factually, the performance is way better with four nanometers, and from what this information reveals, the cost is actually better than eight nanometers as well. So when you put all that together, it just doesn't make any sense why they would even be using eight nanometers at that point. It would save them money and give them better performance to go with four nanometers. But other things may be involved that we don't know about that may actually cause them to choose this eight nanometer chip. Maybe there was deals made long, long ago that we don't know about. We simply just don't have enough information yet, but this information is very interesting to discuss about why they may actually be going with four nanometers after all because of the price changes over the years and with the switch 2 not being finalized until now so i'm very curious to see where nintendo will go with this on the final reveal and final release for switch 2 i am mainly concerned with dock performance so i do think either way switch 2 is going to be a beast in docked mode is the portable mode that you know fans of portable play are gonna have concerns about, which I share with you those concerns, but personally I think Switch 2 either way is gonna be pretty awesome. Now moving on to the next topic I wanted to discuss is that the Switch 2, some people had some concern about the RAM bandwidth 
a switch to being quote unquote just 120 gigabytes per second with LP DDR5X at 7500 MTs, which is mega transfers per second. And having that 12 gigabytes of it will be an extremely huge benefit to the console. And it'll be more RAM than the Xbox Series S has, which is 10 with only eight gigabytes available for games. However, there is a big caveat to all this that we didn't discuss actually back when we had that live stream and a few months ago when we talked about the big CPU advantages of the new ARM processors. It looks like the Switch 2 will be using a Cortex A78C CPU and the huge difference between this ARM and Cortex CPU versus the very very old CPU of the Switch is that the original Switch and the Tegra X1, guess what that chip did not have? Well it actually didn't have any L3 cache for its CPU to use. And the Cortex A78C has up to eight megabytes of L3 cache. And what this L3 cache does for gaming these days basically is that it gives the chip the ability to have a very small but very fast memory block of data and information that is used consistently and repeatedly in a game. So having L3 cache in something like an open world game is very, very important to keep frame rates up to assist with data streaming while you're going through these big worlds. And the interesting thing is, is that PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X, all three of those consoles also have eight megabytes of L3 cache for their CPUs and GPUs. Basically it's on an SOC to use. And this is very fast memory. It's much, much faster than what is available and say your standard type of memories. All these kinds of data streaming issues happen in these Switch 1 games. Part of it had to do, of course, with the system not having any L3 cache and with the already slow memory bandwidth of the Switch with its LPDDR4 memory didn't help things at all. Having a much newer architecture with ARM and having up to eight megabytes of L3 cache is gonna be a huge benefit for the Switch 2. So I do think this will actually help the overall speed of the console be even better than what people may be expecting with the eight megabytes L3 cache in conjunction with the LPDDR5X 12 gigabytes that they have as well. From what it looks like, the Switch 2 is gonna be just fast enough in terms of the RAM bandwidth. And obviously since they're using DLSS, they're likely not gonna even be hitting over 1080p while docked as a render resolution. They're probably gonna be rendering games at 720p to 900p while docked, but using DLSS, you're gonna be seeing like 1440p image and then upscale probably yet again with things like TAA to 4K on your television and games are gonna be looking really good and really crisp with DLSS, even though they'll be rendering lower. The trick with using DLSS is that you won't be able to see too much of a difference there because the upscaling is so much better than FSR 3. So what about the reveal of Switch 2? Here we are in October, right? Due to that gigantic leak that just happened for Switch 2, you gotta think that Nintendo's gonna be revealing this console very, very soon. There have been a lot of people who are saying that October 10th is the day, which would be just about a week from now that I'm doing this video. So if that is the case, then this may in fact be my very last video before the Switch 2 is revealed. Now, I hope that's the case because I am really excited to actually do some kind of reaction to seeing this console for the first time. And I'm sure you guys are really excited for it as well. So personally, I think October 10th is as good as day as any to reveal this console. And I really hope Nintendo does in fact just go ahead and do it. And it, even if it's not October 10th, if it's sometime later in October, I'm okay with that. But either way, I do think to avoid any more leaks, Nintendo will be revealing this console sooner rather than later. Not only that, but I'm really excited to see some games on the Switch 2. And I do really think that third parties are gonna have like a homecoming basically on Switch 2. Companies like Square Enix and Capcom are gonna probably go ham on Switch 2, guys. And I am really expecting to see Final Fantasy VII Remake, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and even Final Fantasy XVI on Switch 2 at some point. Maybe not all at once, but maybe you know down the line. But I really think that companies like Square Enix are excited to get their games onto Switch 2 because they have not been making that much money selling it just on PlayStation 5. I think they have a big, big opportunity with Switch 2 to make a ton of money, even with lowered settings on those games. I think those games will sell extremely well on Switch 2. For Capcom, I think we'll be getting all the Resident Evil games, not just cloud versions. I think we'll be getting Resident Evil 4 Remake, Resident Evil Village, you know, all the newer Resident Evil games and all the remakes. I think that Capcom will be porting those to the Switch 2 as well. 
it's kind of like a no-brainer, you would say. I just have a very strong feeling that we'll be getting a lot of those type of announcements for Switch 2, maybe even in the first year. Just a ton of ports, a lot of games that people have missed out on with the Switch 1, we'll be getting those on Switch 2. And I'm just really, really excited to see all those things pan out, and I'm sure you guys are as well. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Let me know your thoughts on everything we discussed in the comment section. Thank you so much for your support, and I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.